How the fuck am I funny? What the fuck is so funny about me? Tell me. Tell me what's funny. Set. Remix, let's Yo, go. My flow is Novocaine, my no. bars is hurricanes. Katrina. I got hella cane, Mac in the melon rash. Hot bound and shells exchange. I wanna see these niggas die, die. Make they moms feel hella pain. Walk around like I got a broom in my pants. Now that's a fucking AK, heavy tool in my pants. Shit. Damn, man, these cowards better stay in they lane. And if they ain't. We gonna flip it this time and get paid. We've been hit. They want us to come looking for them. You ready to talk? We ready. But I ain't promising all we gonna do is talk. It's my partner. He's got secrets. What I'm about to tell you is gonna be the craziest thing that you ever heard. What's going on, YouTube? We back in the Low Key Cave. Keyshawn Arms YouTube page, aka Mr. Low Key. And we are back with Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, Season 2. And this is Episode 3, Sleeping Dogs Review. Man, man, man. When we start this episode off, we jump straight into it. Your boy Unique is out here on Demon Time and he ain't playing. He pretty much comes across um, Rock's little stash spot that G uh, Juliana is watching over or whatever. And he pretty much not only robs the place... But pretty much kidnaps Juliana, taking her hostage. So we go straight into it as far as Rock pretty much on a whole Mission Impossible type shit as far as a search. <laughs> she looking for Juliana, but she really looking for that money. But at the same time, you got to remember Juliana is connected to her plug as far as the Colombians. So it's not the fact that we about to re-up as far as rock because that's a whole thing too. They're about to re-up and she just started this new or took over these new projects as far as in Jersey. So now she got three spots. Spots in New York and now she got this new spot outside of New York in Jersey. And the fact they just took all this money that she's supposed to be using to re-back up. And how's she going to explain this to the Colombians? Not only the fact that she ain't got the money, but the fact that her, the cousin that's kin to the Columbia's her plug has been kidnapped because of some beef she got going on. That's a lot. And that was a smart play by Unique, man. I got to hand it to him. But like I said in the previous episode, Unique's back was up against the wall. But it's not only that. Besides all that that's going on, your boy Howard, we jumped right into it. Like I said, it's not maybe 15 to 20 minutes into the episode your boy Howard comes out and straight up on Kanan. What up, B? What's going on? Come here. I'm your daddy. Like, straight, that's it. Like, I'm your daddy. I'm your pops. And he goes into detail trying to tell him, like, you know, Rock, she's going to be telling you I'm crazy. I ain't right in my head, this and the third. But I'm your father. He even goes into telling him, you Def Con, not your pops. I'm your pops. Like, he is straight up talking to him. And Kanan ain't got nothing to say. Kanan just sitting there like, oh, what? Because he remember what Rock tried to explain to him. Like, he going to come up trying to talk that crazy shit. But you know Kanan, by this point in time, Kanan is kind of not really all the way trustworthy of Rock. And you got to remember, going all the way back to what she did to his homeboy. And now, in this episode, you talking about lies on type of lies, they just keep piling up and piling up. And you got to remember, we going into something where Jukebox and Kanan are dealing with two parents who are basically, Marvin ain't necessarily lying to Jukebox, he just ain't there. I mean, he just isolates himself in the fact that, speaking of Marvin, what he has going on this episode, which we're going to get to. But yes, your boy Howard, he is on it. He like, I ain't got time to be waiting or nothing. And he comes straight out and tell Kanan, I'm your father. Like, come holler at me. I'm going to be around. You ain't got to worry about it. I want to talk. That's pretty much what we got with that. And it's just Kanan's expression because you can almost see in him that it ain't like he don't believe him, but it's like, you know what Rock told him, but at the same time, it's like listening to what he's saying because he's saying the same thing Rock was telling him, like, he gonna say you crazy. Howard telling him, yeah, your mom gonna probably tell you that I'm crazy this in the third, but yeah. That was like, damn, we gonna jump straight into it. Okay, let's go. <laughs> By the way, I wanna say something too before I finish this review. Whoever is structuring Power Book 3 as far as raising Canaan, whoever is structuring this show, I mean, the person that's behind as far as uh, I know 50 is executive producer with it, but I know he's not um, hands-on structuring the show. All I want to say is, and I think the guy is Sasha Penn or Sasha Penn or something, I could be wrong. Whoever is structuring Power Book 3 Raising Canaan, 
going off the first season and going into this one, which is they just going ten times in. The acting went up ten notches. The writing done went up. Like the storytelling, like I'm just indulged in what I'm getting with this. And I'm just trying to say basically the person who's behind this or people who are behind Power Book 3, y'all need to do all of them as far as the spinoffs. Y'all need to be attached to the rest of them because we are not getting the way the story that we getting or we not getting this perform this phenomenal performances or just the story detailing that we getting with this. That's all I want to say. That's all I want to say. I want whoever is structuring Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, to get behind all of them, especially Force. Power Book 4, Force Tommy Show, they need you right now. They need you. They definitely need you. But yes, man, your boy Howard out here letting Canaan know I'm your pops. Um, besides that, Jukebox. She's in the studio, man, and she does what Jukebox does, and we already knew Jukebox could sing, and it's really what goes on besides her singing. Crown Macho and Lou, even Lulu, and shout out to Crown Macho. I'm going to say this, man. I know Crown being real shisty right now. He a little slaky, slimy nigga doing what he doing with Lulu's girl at the same time. I'm kind of enjoying his character this season. Crown Macho, to me, like I said, Say what you want to say about him, but he is more informal as far as the music industry part go. And you could tell the way he be talking and what he be saying. The fact that what he say to Jukebox as far as the, her look, because Jukebox is a tomboy. I mean, she likes girls or whatever, so she comes off very uh, masculine. You know what I'm saying? But not to take anything away from her beauty, she's a very beautiful woman. Even with her dressing like that, because I don't seen the real actress. Shout out to the real actress or whatever. She's very beautiful. But as far as jukebox, uh, it don't take nothing away from her beauty. It's just the fact that it's her persona and the way she comes off. She is very, very, like, strong honey. And she's going to say what she got to say. Look how she is with Kanan or whatever. Um, it's the thing they're telling her, though, as far as her appearance. Like, when people listen to you, you don't hear that beautiful voice, but they want to see that beautiful body. They want to see that appearance match it. And her, her thing is, this is me. I'm not changing that for all. And y'all basically want me to walk around here on some whole type shit, like very revealing clothing and shit like that, I'm guessing. But, like I said, this is the music industry. You gotta remember that. And from a couple episodes in, it just, the way Crown has been coming off, like I said, whether you like him or not, he's making sense. <laughs> he's making sense in a lot of situations and the things he's saying or whatever. So, I'm not all the way mad at his character or whatever because I feel like Lulu, being that he's the financial person behind everything, it's just the fact that Lulu is not used to being around or dealing with um, the music industry or whatever. He's the streets. You know what I'm saying? He's the streets or whatever. Quick money, fast money, him, bum, bam. And people with morals and values or people who deal with certain things a certain way if you don't get them right or if you don't pay them a certain time or get their money, they're going to deal with it a different way in the streets, but this is a music industry, and I think Lulu is going to start to learn that. But, yeah, man, um, Crown Macho, I don't, I'm really, I'm kind of liking this um, liking this character this season, man, besides what he's doing with Lulu Girl. Not only that, shout out to Quincy as far as the actor playing him, you know, Puff Daddy, a son or whatever. Um, I'm really enjoying him, though. But not only that, it's what he does as far as going to rock because – Crown thing is like I need to get Lulu up out the studio. I need him out the way. Get put him back in the streets and let me deal with everything that's going on as far as the music side of things. And like I said once again, whether you like him or not, most of the things he is saying as far as pertaining to whatever kind of situations they get in. Besides that thing, Lulu, because Lulu, Lulu is talented. Lulu has the potential to become maybe even better than Crown because it seems in here where he's working on his music. Not only that, it's the fact that he found that talent as far as old girl that he did bring the Crown or whatever. Crown not feeling up right now, but she is talented, and I feel like she can be something. She can do something. So that's one thing I will give Lulu credit for, but the thing is Lulu is one place, and he can't be both places. One thing you always say as far as when they say about the rap industry or even just the music, music industry overall, you can't do both. You can't have one foot in the streets and one foot in um, the music industry, the music business side. It ain't going to work like that. And I think they're going to make a lot of play on that um, as far as raising Canaan or whatever and what Lulu is trying to do with him going into the music industry. But besides that, um, how was partner? She is getting a little suspicious of him. Like I said, man, she ain't really trusting or believing certain things he's saying as far as the shooting. But she already put um, kind of on him about his secrets or whatever. The thing about Howard's partner, though, as far as the girl, 
it's really it's that too, but it's kind of how we get in this build up between her and Jukebox and their relationship. I didn't know how it's partner up was a lesbian or that she liked females or whatever. Jukebox. Her whole thing with females and the fact that how it's partner is a cop. I really am going into the whole theory stages now as far as how it's partner getting in cahoots with Jukebox and her kind of getting into that stage of leading Jukebox on to become a cop. I said this in the first season though because I was like, oh, this is kind of us getting introduced when she started kind of giving us a little information to how it's partner or whatever as far as Jukebox. But like I said, I might have been wrong. Y'all let me know if y'all seen this in the first season as far as knowing how his partner was a lesbian or whatever. But the fact that I kind of feel like I found this out in this episode, I'm like, oh, okay. How was partner is a lesbian? And, you know, her and Jukebox got this relationship. And it's like two and two together, you know, I feel like this is going to be a building upon thing. And I wonder if how was partner is going to become kind of corrupt dealing with Jukebox. And we're going to get like this bonded thing between jukebox and um how it's partner like i said the dread because i feel like none of these people are going to make it out when we get to the final season of race can everybody gonna be dead by the end and i mean everybody but yeah man um besides how it's partner and her suspicious um her suspicions of him and what she feels like he's hiding or whatever canaan finally once again the show is called power book three raising canaan and it is about Kanan, but it's really the people around Kanan, too. And how everything is building up on the fact of him becoming who he becomes. Not only him, Jukebox, too. And her relationship with Marvin and dealing with that. Speaking of Marvin, before I get to Kanan, I got to talk about Marvin, man. Him and his, um, what's the names? Anger management classes, man. I already said this. Him and the teacher, as far as the girl, the woman that's over the anger management classes, making him stay there, I feel like they're going to come across some kind of relationship. They are building on them having a relationship. And we really get kind of um, emphasis on that in this episode about this relationship that we eventually are going to get. And it might even kind of put a different look on Marvin. We kind of get that too with him in this episode because... She basically giving Marvin these breathing techniques to control his anger when he's dealing with situations, confrontational situations more than anything. And just so happened after he done with his class or whatever, he get into this situation with this guy that's in a wheelchair at the spot that they carter basically from New Jersey City at the um, Carter that they done took over. But what, um, this guy pretty much, you know what I'm saying, he done had to deal with a lot of things in life as far as this guy in the wheelchair. And him and Marvin kind of get into it because, you know, the dope things or whatever, they've been pissing and they've been doing everything in the third in the hallways or whatever, and he kind of coming to him complaining. And before Marvin can kind of get into that rage moment, he kind of steps back and thinks about it. And him and this guy kind of come to some reasonable solution or whatever as far as the guy in the wheelchair. Not only that, Marvin pretty much having him on the elevator and everything, like Marvin pretty much is kind of taking it in. It's a funny moment, too. Shout out to the actor playing Marvin, man. I'm... Join, I'm very much enjoying him this season. Once again, we got standout characters in Power Book 3, Raising Kanan. All these characters I enjoy, man. Lulu, everybody. But Marvin is definitely one of the characters I'm very much enjoying this season overall, man. Maybe it's the whole thing with Lulu and his simp and shit. And him and his girlfriend. And the fact that he kind of coming off kind of unknowledgeable as far as the music shit. And Crown kind of having to school him somewhere. I'm just saying. But besides that, um, like I said, Rock is on her mission. She's running around town on a uh, rampage trying to find Unique. She got everybody moving. She got Lulu. She got um, Marvin. Her whole thing with Lulu is because Lulu, once again, Lulu is halfway into the uh, music thing in the streets. So he can't concentrate on the streets because he's trying to do this music shit. So when this type of shit go down, where it's going to have ramifications, not only on what you trying to do as far as your music, which you are financing with this drug money, it's what's going on with what you are doing in the streets with your sister and brother, as far as Lulu. But when everything is going down, Rock is still, like I said, on her rampage trying to find out where Juliana is at. Because I was tense, too. I was I was like, what the fuck is Unique got planned? What he got going on? For real, though. We eventually do get to that, though. But um, before we get to that, like I said, my boy Kanan. This is his show. We got to talk about Kanan. <laughs> my bad, y'all. It's just so much different things going on. It's very interesting. And I'm loving what they're doing but with this, by the way. I'm loving the writing. And I feel like the writing took a step, took a, um extra notch up as far as this season. But Kanan and Fab, I mean, fam I'm about to call him Fabulous. Kanan and Famous are pretty much trying to still get my boy a place to stay as far as Famous. You know, he at the Y, and he dealing with pedal people. Weird ass shit going on at the Y, you know what I'm saying? This is the early 90s, you got to remember. But yeah, 
He got a lot of shit going on there. Can't come up with his idea as far as selling his tapes. Basically stashing the little drugs in them. So he pretty much goes to the Carter and sneaks some shit off. I'm pretty sure that's going to come back to him. Somebody at the Carter coming from Rock thinking somebody done took the stash. Being that something that came back low on something or whatever. Or a certain product missing. Yeah, Kanan, you fucked up, man. That's fucked up. You're going to bring that on somebody. But um, besides that, it's really the conversation between Famous and Kanan pertaining to Scrap. You already know what happened to Scrap last episode. He got took out or whatever. And Kanan don't know nothing about this. Once again, the lies on top of lies. Because eventually Kanan does go ask Rock, like, damn, you, what happened to Scrap? I didn't know about that. And the thing is, Scrap's supposed to have killed himself. And Rock, like, she going along with this whole thing. As far as agreeing, like, that's what happened. Once again, she already lied to him about Howard and the fact that um, Howard is really his father as far as Kanan. Now it's all these other lies as far as pertaining to what happened with Scrap. And you know, Scrap and Kanan have built a relationship after everything they done went through. And, um... Kanan, like, Scrap wouldn't kill himself. Look at everything he done went through. Scrap said, um, Kanan said Scrap felt like the whole iPad thing was kind of intimidating. Kind of put fear in people in the streets or whatever. But, yeah, we got Rock pretty much trying to pull the wool over Kanan and I still. And once again, this is that buildup of Rock. I feel like Kanan becomes who he is. And I feel like, I, now I'm not the only person. Everybody's probably saying the same thing. We gonna have Kanan ending up killing Rock in that probably final season of Raising Kanan. Kanan gonna end up killing Rock. Um, what breeze at by the way? Are we gonna get breeze? Are we gonna get baby Tommy and baby ghost? <laughs> Just playing, y'all. They ain't, I ain't even worried about none of that right now. I'm good with what we getting as far as what we got right now. But yeah, man, besides that, like I said, your boy out here trying to get a spot as far as famous and crown being who he is as far as the producer, knowing that he's smashing famous sister, he seems like he's gonna look out for uh, famous and find him a spot. So yeah. Besides all that, though, um, back to Jukebox. She's on this whole thing, too, as far as trying to find, well, not find her mama, but trying to really find a way to how to approach her moms with everything that's going on, especially with her and Marvin. Speaking of Marvin, they, Marvin has a little moment with Lulu, kind of, because um, Lulu is listening to the thing that, the um, tape or recording that Jukebox they just did. You know her vocals and everything she always could sing and I'm telling we're gonna get to this and find out what happened really with Jukebox Moms but you know Marvin kind of have a moment you know he going through these anger management classes and everything and he kind of basically coming at Lulu cause you know Jukebox not staying with Marvin she's standing rocking the house and he been asking Lulu like she asking about me whatever and you know Marvin he like they ain't worrying about it let's get back to the concentration as far as trying to find Julia to get back on these streets and you kind of see Lulu kind of kind of like you know come on man come on Man, I'm loving the writing. Once again, the character development and all that, I'm loving this. But yeah, man, I'm really trying to see what's going to happen with that. But Jukebox, she actually kind of get to the point of approaching her mama. And shout out to Latoya Lucky who playing her mama. Oh, I can't wait till we actually get some lines and some dialogue between these two. But just Latoya's Lucky's facial expression when she sees Jukebox. That's acting. That's acting in itself. Just your facial expressions. Once again, we was talking about this with Little Murdo P. Valley. Without him saying any words, just his look. And it's just showing you, man, the surprise and the shock and the awe of both of them. Shout out to the actress playing Jukebox, too, man. It's the look on both of their faces when they see each other. I felt that. We felt that as an audience, man. It's all the, oh, my God, it's my daughter. Oh, my God, it's my mama. So I cannot wait till we get some dialogue between those two. But I really enjoyed that scene, man. And once again, it's the build-up. It's the build-up. What's going to happen with Jukebox Moms to get her to the point of her coming this monster we're going to get once again? I know this called Raising Canaan, but this shit is damn near Raising Canaan and Jukebox. I almost, once again, the fact that we getting all we getting, with Jukebox. I almost wish we would have got a little bit more of a Jukebox in the original power. For real, though, I feel like they did what they were supposed to do, though, because you didn't want to have too much lingering because the main original show is about ghosts. It's not really about King or Jukebox. I just enjoy getting introduced to these phenomenal characters, man. But yes, besides that, um, your girl, Rock, we finally get some type of information on where Juliana is and Unique. More so Unique and it come from Unique Homeboy. You know, the boy that's um, working with Rock now. I forgot my man's name. I'm forgetting his name, but 
he comes with the information because Rock pretty much put it in his ear like, nigga, you becoming not useful now. I mean, you just got hired. And the fact that you unique's homeboy and we just got hit, you need to make yourself very useful right now. We're going to have to cancel you. <laughs> like, <laughs> Rock ain't no joke, bro. Especially when she feel like her back is being pinned against the wall. I always remember that. Because Rock got a lot of things coming from left field. And the fact that she's trying to make sure she's handling the business as far as what she's doing with the um, drug empire or whatever. But not only that, managing Kanan and keeping them lives piled up and making sure she don't give him too much. And the fact that last year he was trying to be a part of everything or whatever. But now I think Rock done came to that realization, especially having, the, having those conversations, not only with Tiffany, but... Um, it's looking at him and asking him last previous episode, well, not the previous episode, but the episode before that, how he really feeling about everything that's going on and him being a part of it. I still feel like he's going to be the one helping her throw the body away. At first, I thought it was scrap, but maybe it's not going to be scrap now because you remember in the trailer, we seen him helping her throw a body away, put a body away. So now, I don't, yeah, that ain't scrap. So yeah, we're going to see where they go with that. But yeah, Unique, he pretty much is at his old little spot. And he pretty much is trying to make a deal with Rock. So after Unique's old homeboy who's working for Rock now pretty much puts the word out to get um, Rock to come around her, Lulu, and Marvin, of course they don't trust this nigga. But when they go in, it's pretty much Unique trying to explain to them why he's holding Juliana at gunpoint. He just want to live his life. You know, he pretty much letting them know, like, he can't do shit. And it's more so of him telling Rock, you won, you did it on your third of course this shit ain't gonna play out like that. You need got a plan. He got a plan. So I'm curious at what he's planning and what he's trying to do. Once again, I feel like this is gonna be involved with the mafia coming in because we still ain't got the mafia. We've seen them in the trailers. And remember, once again, I'm gonna keep saying this until we come back around to this because I know this is gonna come back into play. The guy that Unique helped out in jail when he got into that situation, that guy's gonna come into play and I feel like he's gonna be the reason Unique kind of get back into the play of things. But pretty much people are trying to tell Unique or Rock's people, like, Unique, you need to go, nigga. Just move. Get out of Southside. But Unique is like, this is home. I ain't got nowhere else. I don't feel about, I don't feel like going nowhere else. This is the spot. So he pretty much just trying to make a deal with Rock to leave him and his family alone. Leave him be. Let him live his life. Going about his business. He is retired. Jay, Jersey hanging up in the bleak, it's, as far as Unique's words. But um, Rock is pretty much with it. It's just really Marvin, too. He like, yeah, he tried to kill Lulu. But Lulu even like, I ain't taking it personal. You taking it personal, Nick? Nah. Of course Nick taking this personal. Nigga, y'all took him out of the game. And then y'all try to get him locked up for killing a cop. He's saying he's not taking it personal. But unique, this is very personal and unique, I feel like. And I think it's very personal between him and Rocky. He definitely going to try to get his lick back. So you got to remember, man, Rock got all type of different angles coming from her. You got Howard doing what he doing, and now she's going to have that on her brain, so it might kind of throw her off of with everything she got going on in the streets. It all depends, man, but it's a lot going to be coming on Rock's plate now. But after this conversation, it's more so Rock saying, give her damn money now. So it seems like, it seems like Unique just want to be out here. Of course, it's not going to happen. It's not going to play out like that. This nigga's way too important of a character for him to just be out here trying to live regular life. No, it ain't going to play out like that. He has a plan. But for right now, it's coming off as Unique is just wanting to be left alone and out the way and let Rock do what she doing. So it's very much going to be interesting to see where we go with this, um, especially with the whole thing going on with Kanan. And Howard, because Howard approaches Kanan again at the very end of this episode. Like, yeah, your mama probably talking that bullshit again, ain't she? She's already telling you I'm crazy, I'm stupid, I ain't got it all right, I got um, amnesia and this and the third. Nah, I'm your pops. And whenever you ready, I'm ready to talk. And you can see the look kind of on Kanan's face. Like, yeah, he's believing him. That's all I can say. He seems, he, Kanan very much seems like he is possibly believing him. And once again, you got to remember everything Rock been telling him. And once he finds out what really happened with Scrap, but you know he's going to end up finding out. That's all going to come piling down again, and it's going to take him right back to when Rock didn't tell him about killing his homeboy. And I'm telling you, it's going to cause some very much friction between him and Rock. Now, I feel like that's probably going to happen towards the end of this season. Going into season three, we're probably going to have that little friction or in between between Kanan and Rock and probably that development um, happening with Kanan becoming who he becomes. I don't know. I don't know. Once again though, we probably gonna get Breeze too. 
<laughs> Hi, hopes, because we all been waiting for our introduction to Breeze, because that's kind of a Kane's people. That's the person who put Kanan on, if I'm not mistaken, right? That's Breeze. That's uh, Breeze is Kanan's OG. If I'm not mistaken, y'all let me know if I'm wrong. If I'm not mistaken, I might have to go back to the original power. But um, yeah, I'm very much trying to find out what's going to be happening and moving forward. But more than anything, what is Unique's plan? Not only that. The whole thing with Crown, too, and uh, Rock, and what Rock is going to do is she's going to move forward with trying to do this whole thing with taking on Crown's uh, position. Because Crown pretty much wants to bring Rock in and move Lulu out the way so she can have he can have the, the um, music side of things to himself like he had pretty much before. Lulu got involved with the money and whatever. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes moving forward, especially with the fi family dynamic and everybody trying to do their thing especially with Rock and Lulu, who are pretty much been in each other's necks this season. But yeah, I very much want to know what is Unique's plan. More than anything, though, I want to see that dialogue between Jukebox and her moms, because I feel like it's going to be some revelations coming out about the reason that Jukebox mom is out the picture, not from what everybody else said. Another lie, too, with Rock. Not only with what she's been saying to Kana, but whatever she's been saying to Jukebox, too. And there's probably going to be some friction there, too. But y'all let me know in the comment section. How did y'all feel about this pre um recent episode, Sleeping Dogs of Raising Kane in season two? Let me know in the comment section. If you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Let you know on the upload new videos. This is the road to 700 subs. And by the way, I don't know why I say if you watch me on YouTube. I'm thinking I'm live and I'm on YouTube and Twitch. But anyway, I appreciate everybody coming through. And thank you for taking the time just to watch me do what I do in the content. Thank you for taking the time to watch me and the deal. Shout out to my cousin the deal for watching us and do what we do. As far as the lives, uncut ish talk, movie reviews, all of it. I appreciate y'all coming through and checking us out. Other than that, we are. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from Nairclaw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense.